What's up guys, Kanjo here. Today we're gonna to be talking about Framer Forms and specifically the new Framer Form Builder. So I've just figured out how to use this for free and now I'm here to share it with you guys. So let's dive right in. So in this video specifically, we'll be covering how you can use the Framer Forms to sign up users for Beehive, the email newsletter platform. And this is just one of many examples and I'll show you the step within the process of where you can pretty much connect this with any app for free. So traditionally in Beehive, we had to use iframes, um, which are provided by Beehive and obviously styled with your custom colors, um, but these don't look the best. And with our Framer site, we wanna keep our branding as aligned throughout the whole entire website as possible. So that's why the new Framer form builder is actually a lot better than this. So let's go and check it out. So starting with the blank canvas here, um, we can actually go ahead to the insert tab right here, and we can just search for form and we'll see the new form builder. So we can drag this onto our canvas and now it's here. So let's just add a little bit of layout here. We'll put this in the center just so it's nice. And yeah, that's how easy it is to create your form in your UI. So now let's check out how we can customize this as well as um, actually hook up the form so it does something. All right, so to customize the framer form, we can come over to our layers tab here and we see we're given this form uh, element, which is basically just a stack. You can see we have all of the uh, normal stack variables here that we can change and toggle. And then we have these three things in here called labels. And what these labels are, are just further wrappers for your the name of the input and the input. Um, so we can see this one's for the name, this one's for the email. Each one of these has a label. Um, so we also have our button down here, which is just a submit button. So let's go ahead and for the purposes of this tutorial, we're gonna just be collecting email signups. So I don't need the location of the name. So what I'm gonna do is actually just delete both of those labels. And now we're left with this. So we can still do a little bit of styling here. Um, personally, I don't like the fact that it says email there. So I'm gonna delete that. And then what we can actually do in this form just to make it look a little better is we can have it go sideways. Um, the flex direction and obviously now the email is a little small so we can just we can make this a little bigger let's make this 400 pixels and the button is way too big so let's just turn this up to 300 here oh a little too much 200 250 there we go all right so now we have a pretty normal looking uh, email sign up and it's time to hook this up with our automations. All right, so if we actually click on the form here, where we can see we're given this new properties tab right here on the right called form. And basically we have two options, send to and redirect. So when you click send to, you can see you have email, webhook and Google Sheets. Um, so email is pretty straightforward. It'll obviously email it to you. It'll come from a framer uh, a framer address and it will email you all of the values of the form. So for this one, it would just email me the email that is inputted. Um, the webhook basically just allows you to set up a webhook listener somewhere. Um, this can be a little bit confusing. You sort of have to know how to set that all up. And if you use a service like Zapier, it's actually going to cost money. Um, so personally, I, I don't bother with the webhook, although it is a very viable option. But for the purposes of this tutorial, because we want to keep things free and easy, we're going to be using Google Sheets. And now Google Sheets is a pretty straightforward platform. Pretty much everyone's used it. If not, you've probably used Excel. Um, so we're going to select Google Sheets here and we'll see this pop up um, for the sheet that we have to connect as well as our fallback email. So the fallback is obviously, um, it's just going to let you know if the Google Sheet stops working. Uh, so that's my email in there. Um, so I'm going to click connect sheet. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring up a Google sign in. So I'm just going to log in with my email account here and allow Framer to access that. So now it's going to say, obviously, open Framer again. And now you can click add sheet. So I'm going to add a sheet and I'm going to call this uh, video tutorial demo, all caps, why not? So now you can see the sheet is connected and you are ready to go. So let's test this out and show you how this part works. So now that our sheet's connected, um, we can come in 
to the desktop here. We'll just click play um, to test out the environment and I will enter my email. Once I click submit, it's gonna pop up with this message, thank you. And this framer button is just like any other framer component. It has many different states in here, which you can customize, success, error, disabled loading, and obviously the default. Um, so you can manage all of these things uh, within the actual button itself. So you can say when the form is loading, you want the loading state. When the form is successful, you want the success state. And obviously changing the default variant. So we just submitted our email. So now let's go and check it out in the Google Sheets. So navigating to your Google Drive, you'll see a new sheet has been created. And we can see here, it gives me the date and the email that was signed up. So we can confirm that that has worked and it's working properly. So this is a really great organized way to see all of your stuff. And then obviously, um, we can now automate everything we need to do with Zapier. So I'm going to show you how I use this to automate my email signups for when people subscribe to my form on my Framer site. So let's check it out. All right, so now you want to come into Zapier and you can create an account for free. Um, what this is going to handle is the automation between the Google Sheet updating and Beehive subscribing. Uh, so you obviously don't need to use Beehive. You can use this with basically any other of the 6,000 applications that Zapier supports. So I'm just going to show you basically how to get the information out of Google Drive. So you're going to create a new Zap and it's going to pop up the editor. And this is really easy to use. It's like just a classic code builder. Um, so the trigger is going to be a Google Sheet. And then you're going to define the event that happens in the Google Sheet. So we're going to say newer updated spreadsheet row. Um, and from here, just continue. So it knows, obviously, your Google account you're going to have to log in with. Um, and then the trigger that we're going to use, uh, we're just going to select our spreadsheet. So the video tutorial demo. Um, and then the worksheet within that, which is sheet one for us. Um, and then the trigger column, we're going to pick as email. And it knows that because uh, we already have the default value that we tested earlier. So now that we can continue there, we're going to test the trigger and it's gonna find the most recent one. So it's just gonna test that it can actually get that information. So now we're gonna choose the action that happens. And for me, I'm going to be choosing Beehive. So here, and the event that I wanna to happen to Beehive is I want to create a subscriber. So here I can continue and here is the action. So you can have multiple publications. For me, it's just the one, Camjo Dev. Um, the email is going to be the email that we pulled from the sheet. So that's the test data right here. Uh, not two of them, just one. Um, and then the tier, you can obviously select all this stuff, premium tiers if you have. Uh, if you want to send them a welcome email, you can set this to true. I would recommend doing that. Um, and then obviously you can edit all of the other things in here as well. So now that this is done, we can test this. And depending on this, it should sign this uh, subscriber up to Beehive. So if we come into my Beehive settings here, just go back to the dashboard, we can see that one new subscriber has been added. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys have any questions about Framer stuff, tips and tricks, um, I'll be continuing with many more videos like this. But yeah, this has been how to set up your framer forms. I know this can be a little confusing the first couple times you do it, but uh, I'm here to help. So thank you guys and have a great day.